Hello everybody, this is Reeves 2 s here, and today I'm going to teach you how to edit the CUCM 12 ISO. So CUCM is Cisco Unified Communications Manager, that is the uh, heavyweight enterprise uh, VoIP solution from Cisco uh, that allows you to uh, literally have thousands of phones running. Um, so, you know, in many cases there's, uh, you know, a good use case for not using VMware. Uh, but unfortunately, by default, that's the only platform that, uh, that's been enabled on the ISO. So that means it's going to say hardware unsupported and not allow you to install CUCM if you're using any other virtualization. Uh, the great news, though, is that Cisco has left all those bindings in there. Uh, so we just have to make a few changes so it will allow us to work on other virtualization, right? Like, um, you know, uh, OpenStack, uh, Proxmox, um, Camu, KVM, and Zen. Uh, pretty much any virtualization can now be used um, once you make a few edits here. So I'm going to be following my guide. It's pretty straightforward to get going. Um, and so let's just go through how we get that going here, guys. Okay. So I'm going to follow my own guide here. The first thing I'm going to do is you make dir CUCM mount. Okay. And I do have a link to this guide in my description. Let's make that directory. Uh, in my case, I already have it there. Uh, I've already made it uh, just before this video. Uh, so it says mount dash o loop your CUCM ISO. Uh, I'm just going to change this to the name of my ISO, which is uh, something like underscore UCS install. Okay, so we're going to change that. Okay, now it's all mounted. And once again, let's keep following the guide here. Um, so in a previous video, um, I didn't copy literally everything as it was. Um, there is a hidden file that would not be copied. So in my previous video, I had a star. Um, so it didn't copy anything except uh, files that were visible and not hidden. Um, so this is the way to do it. This is the way I've always done it, but uh, I was daydreaming my previous video. Uh, so my apologies to my subscribers uh, uh, for uh, copying it that way. Uh, I'm going to explain a little bit in a second what that means, though. Okay, so we're going to copy it here. I think this is a little bit easier to use. So what we're doing is we're copying the ISO files uh, that are mounted in CUCM mount to CUCM edit ISO. And just to show you guys what I'm talking about, if you do an LSALCUCM mount, um, you'll see, guys, there is a hidden file here called uh, disk info. All right. And that file must be copied um, for things to work. Uh, if you look at the contents of that file, it just says Cisco Unified Communications. Um, so it will find uh, the CD ROM. Okay. So definitely not a good thing. Um, so keep going here. That's now just basically copy and paste at this point. Okay, so let's do that, cd into there, view edits here. We're going to remove OpenStack and VMware. We're going to do a cd into KVM. And remove these directories. So just copying and pasting here. And I'm going to go cd four times of um, double dots to go up four, uh, four paths here, four directories. Okay, now we're going to edit the hssi underscore api dot sh file. I'm using VI, but you can use whatever editor that you like. So here's all how I do it. Uh, basically, I'm saying change, right? So saying find all this and change it. I think it's easier just to use VI and search for the, the zero case like this. Okay, so that's what I've done here. Now I'm going to delete this entire case statement, and I'm going to change it to this, right? So I'm just going to copy and paste all this. Copy this. Let's erase this entire case statement in Bash here. Okay, right until the uh, the double uh, semicolons there. Okay, paste it in there. And I have to uh, force, uh, force uh, the file to be written there because it's read only. I'm going to edit uh, iHardware now, another file, iHardware.sh. Okay, I'm going to just change this function. So it's just easy to just, just to find it on your own, but uh, to make it foolproof, why don't we just search for it? Okay, here's this whole function. Now, I know I want to just erase it and replace it uh, with this. Now, I guess I also could have just um, erased um, these two uh, these two lines here. Um, but, you know, to make it foolproof, let's just do copy and paste, which is the whole idea here. We can't have any mistakes. Okay, and now we're also going to move a file. We are going to move the api underscore implementation .proposed file uh, to just being a .sh file. So it's actually um, there and usable. Okay, and what else we need to do? We need to edit it now. Okay, copy and paste once again, just using VI. Okay, I'm going to look for the first return dollar sign RC. 
okay, and go to the closing uh, bracket of that function. And we're just going to implement this new function here. Um, it's just nice to have, um, especially uh, regarding the uh, persistent net rules. Um, if you have a new NIC or add a new NIC, um, it's going to work this way. And it will also be called uh, ETH0 rather than maybe something like ETH2. Okay, so we'll save that. And actually in call, copying my guide here, there's one more thing we normally need to do. Uh, the reason I didn't do it is because I want you to follow my guide and, and make sure it makes sense for you. Um, with this stuff here, um, if you are not using vert IO, which is a pair of virtualized uh, accelerated um, IO interface uh, that is used uh, mainly in KVM and I believe also in, in sometimes Zen, um, basically what it means is if you have a dev slash VDA as your hard disk, it means, it means you're using vert IO normally. Okay, if you're not using vert IO, then your drive is going to be traditionally uh, named. It's going to be a dev slash SD, something like SDA, right? SDB. Um, so understand which one you're using. Now, if you're not using vert IO, you're going to want to go back into this API implementation file here. And in our case, you know, I'm, I'm going to be using VBox. So I wouldn't be using vert IO. Okay, so I'm going to want to change this pattern here. So I'll just search for VDX pattern. And we're going to change it to SD because it's going to treat everything as uh, KVM. When it's KVM, uh, it's going to want to find uh, the VDX pattern, right? So uh, in other words, by default, unless you tell it to, it's going to be looking for you to have a dev uh, VD drive. And if you don't, it's going to say there, there's no hard drive found. And the craziest thing, if you actually um, look further into how it's working, um, what it actually means is that the script itself, it, it, it's looking for a dev VD. So even though the drive is actually there, um, so it, for example, if you have a dev SD, uh, even though Linux actually will detect it, you would think that based on the message, it actually can't uh, support your drive or maybe it doesn't have a kernel module for it. It's not the case, but uh, the thing is we need to, uh, to change that pattern there to avoid that problem, okay? Uh, now after that, it's just a matter of copying and pasting here using the gen ISO image. Uh, I'm going to quickly explain what some of this stuff does here. The most important thing for you is to edit the dash O. Okay, the dash O uh, is the output file here. And it's going to be your output ISO. In my case, I'm putting it to slash TMP uh, KVM enabled by Real Tech Talk. You know, you could change that. It could be anything. Uh, you probably actually don't want it to be in TMP. Uh, the reason being is um, a TMP is wiped out every time you reboot. Okay, so maybe you're unsure, want to be lazy. I just put a tilde and then a slash there. Uh, this ISO is now going to go just, just straight to my home directory. Uh, in my case, it's going to be slash root because I'm, I'm, uh, I've changed to uh, to root here. Uh, the other thing here is just telling us our boot image is ISO Linux bin, and it means that it must be located in the ISO Linux uh, folder, which it is. If you do an ls from this directory, you'll see ISO Linux is there. Uh, the catalog is uh, boot.cat, also inside there. Uh, no emulation boot, bootloader size 4, boot info table, all standard stuff that we need to make in ISO uh, work and bootable. Uh, Joliet uh, extensions, Rockford extensions, ISO level 4. Basically, in a quick, nice, easy way is that it allows us to have longer file names and longer uh, directory names. And so things don't get broken. Everything can be read, uh, even though it will warn us there could be a buffer overflow in your OS. Unless you're running like Windows 95 or XP, I don't think it's going to be an issue. Uh, in our case, um, you know, uh, as a Linux-based uh, OS, it's not going to be an issue. Okay, so once you're good at this, you're just going to hit enter, and it's going to generate the ISO. But I can talk about a few things I just quickly added here. Some common errors you might get are maybe a ks underscore pre dot sh error. So that's normally caused by not having your uh, correct VDX pattern. Uh, I mentioned it earlier as well. If you get the error about uh, the disk not being found in any CD-ROM drives, uh, then it's probably uh, that the disk info file is not there. Okay, so that's all there is to it. I hope this has been helpful. And once again, this is Arib Suez here. Thanks for watching. And